jam. Toon jam. Hello and welcome to Toon Jam. I am Matt. And I'm Jamie. And this week we are discussing Harley Quinn. That's right, Harley Quinn. Um, you've probably heard of Harley Quinn before, I imagine, by now. Um, <laughs> We're in sort of what I would call a, a Harley Quinnaissance mm-hmm, mm-hmm. area where that Harley Quinn is so hot right now. Uh, <laughs> so let me tell you a bit about Harley Quinn. It's an American uh, adult animated superhero television series based on the DC Comics character of the same name, created by Paul Dini and Bruce Timm from Batman, the original series. So that's where it the animated series, sorry, that's where it, where she first was uh, created, shown, and has sort of worked out of that. So it's kind of a, a two for one, if you will. Yeah. The series is written and uh, executive produced by Justin Halpern, Patrick Schumacher, and Dean Laurie, and follows the misadventures of Harley Quinn and her friend Poison Ivy after leaving her boyfriend, the Joker. Uh, the show premiered on DC Universe to critical success on November 29th, 2019. The critics praising its animation, humour, dark tone and voice acting. The show's second season premiered on April 3rd, 2020. Uh, on September 18th, 2020, the series was officially renewed for a third season, along with the announcement that the show would move to HBO Max uh, following the reconstruction of uh, of the DC Universe sort of app, which we don't really have over here anyway. So that's a, more of an American thing. Uh, but there's a big shifty, shifty shifty over there <laughs> uh, of, of things and such. So um, as far as reception goes, uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, the old Rotten or, oh. or on Rotten Tomatoes, some might say. <laughs> Just keeping it. Uh, broad there um season one has an approval rating of 88 percent based on 32 reviews with an average rating of 8.25 out of 10 Uh, the website's critical consensus reads a strong uh, a strong voice cast and an even stronger grasp of what makes the titular anti-heroine so beloved uh, make Harley Quinn a violently delightful and surprisingly insightful addition to the DC animated universe. Uh, season two has an approval rating of 100%. Oh, snap. Oh, boy. Here we we've go. Got another. We've got another. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't it's know if it counts because it's like season two. Mm. I mean, wh- where do you draw the line at rating things? Yeah, that is a bit strange that there's, there's like a delineation between series. Yeah, because then it's like it could go to episodes. It could go to like, yeah, five minutes of episode 13. Uh, is a yeah. Scene. Scene one. Of <laughs> yeah, <episode laughs> it just four. seems a bit extreme. But um, that's based on 20 reviews with an average of uh, an average rating of nine out of 10. Yeah, it's, and, that's really odd, that is. Because like surely you need season one as well in most series. Like, you should have seen season yeah. one in order to get anything out of season two, surely. Well, I, well my, my theory on this is that, you know, the people that didn't like it wouldn't carry on watching it. Yeah. So, you <laughs> so carry yeah. Lot of people that like it left. <laughs> so, yeah, basically everything after season one is 100%. On, on yeah. So, basically, <laughs> I, I, I think the way to look at it is um, just look at the first season and sort of, unless there's comments on it being absolutely outstanding you know one of them shows where it like starts off garbage and then gets really good yeah um but this uh comments for as far as this goes uh say holly quinn maintains a frenetic energy and humor while doubling down on the shenanigans and giving its titular and hero an even more room to play (laughs) <laughs> so that's why it's got the 100 percent apparently right. uh, on metacritic it has weighed an average score of 82 out of 100 based on reviews from seven critics indicating universal acclaim mm. i don't know if seven critics counts as universal acclaim but... no definitely you wouldn't think so would you but no. here we are <laughs> here we are um fun fact fun fact about the show um Apparently, 
there were sort of rumours beginning that they were going to approach Margot Robbie yeah. uh, to play, to voice Harley Quinn, who, if you don't know, she is Harley Quinn in, in the movies. Um, but it wasn't entirely true. But they did say that, um, so this is uh, one of the producers went on record saying that she was kept in the loop, but she was never interested in playing the role since she was filming and producing Birds of Prey at the time. So I imagine it was just a kind of thing where it's like, yeah, I know you're doing it, but I think at the time, yeah. you know, it's I, I like movies. <laughs> yeah, like movies, not not cartoons, man. <laughs> um, sort of thing. So yeah, it was it was a no. Um, so there you go. That's a fun fact for you there. Margot Robbie knew about it, but didn't want to get involved. Yeah, um, uh, I mean. It- at this point, I'm kind of surprised she wasn't like contractually obligated to do the voice or something. Like. Well, there you go, yeah, yeah, with this this sort of long form, like you know, contract thing that that most like you know the big studios do nowadays. Yeah, like, yeah. surprised she wasn't locked in from day one that she'd she'd voice the character in you know up until her death and then afterwards well, they'd guess, recreate her voice. You know, when it comes uses to digital. when it comes to DC stuff, mm. they have. A pretty popular animated scene anyway yeah they don't need the movie actors do they really yeah that's true I've yeah wouldn't put anyone off that it wasn't her mm. uh, it might have put people onto it um yeah but you know after the success of the first suicide squad film mm. it's amazing that they actually made a harley quinn film really <laughs> it really is yeah <laughs> um but yeah in in, in the end it was uh Kaylee Cuoco, is that how you say it? Cuoco? Uh, yeah, I say it like Cuoco. But I, I never mean, know I don't how, know how to say it. Um, but, you know, I'd apologize. Yeah. I guess I apologize, but she's not going to hear it anyway, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but on the odd chance, I'm sorry I got it wrong. Um, and it's got, it has got quite a, uh, quite a cast to it. Um, we've got, uh, let me just find the cast. Oh, there's so much. Um, oh boy, Alan Tudyk is the Joker. Mhm. So you've got um, Vader as Batman, aren't we? Yes, I'm. I'm looking for Poison Ivy. Uh, it's not uh, listed down here. Is it's it? Lake Lake Bell, I believe. Yes, Lake Bell. That's right. Yep. Yeah. So from uh, you know, Get Out and other such things. Uh, Ron. Is it Funch- Funches? Yeah. Yeah, he's King Funches. Shot. He wasn't in the episode we watched. No. Uh, JB Smooth is Frank the Plant. <laughs> yeah. We've got uh, Jason Alexander, uh, Cyborgman, um, amongst many, many more. Uh, I think in this episode, Jim Rash was in it as well as the Riddler. Yeah. For those community fans out there. The, the um, standout for me, that was. Yeah um absolutely he's he's good and i mean alan, alan tudit plays multiple so he plays the joke he plays Clayface later on uh, who is the main character as well um yeah so you, you've got all sorts I, i'm and there's many many more tony hale as dr psycho he's another main character so oh nice yeah plenty of comedy comedy well-knowns and such but yeah, there you go. So that's uh, that's my information. What's uh, what's Twitter? What's Twitter got to say? Yeah, Twitter seems generally happy with it. I say generally because not everybody is. But uh, we've got uh, we've got morbid heart art who says Harley Quinn the cartoon just made me snort laugh. Why haven't I watched this sooner? Fair. Yeah. So, there you go. You know, that's pretty high up there on the the laughter scale. Like you yeah. know, there's. You've got your sort of like giggle to yourself, you know, the the belly rub laugh kind of thing. And you've got the got the guttural noises and then, you know, a, a little laugh out loud. But the snort yeah. laugh is like higher than that, where it's yeah. like it's become uncontrollable. Yeah, now. snort laughs one below like silent laugh. Yeah, well, where you can't you, breathe. Yeah, you know, when you just <laughs> you're not even you're not even laughing anymore. You just you just gone silent because you're just like <laughs> hyperventilating because yeah. we've gone to some sort of <laughs> laughter so alternative cool. universe which is that's like you only really get that in person yeah yeah but yes yeah, not that's pretty good yeah for it so 
That's a good review if I've ever heard one. Uh, we've got uh, Rob J. There's a bunch of underscores before their name, so uh, there's, yeah. it's like silence then Rob J. So it's yeah. Maybe that's silent Rob laughter. J. Pardon? Pure silent laughter. Yeah, he's still cracking up from the, <laughs> the last good joke they heard. <laughs> uh, Rob J. says, Harley Quinn cartoon is elite television. Oh. That's it. Yeah. Short and sweet Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. elite television though like not just a cartoon just like yeah, that's right. tv really. as a whole this is up there this is up there yeah up there yeah, yeah. the hall of famer high praise yeah uh, we also got uh josie janani who says in other news why is the harley quinn cartoon so relatable oh yeah so yeah uh, I mean, yeah i guess I, I it's I it's one of those things you don't expect going in it it's, it's almost doesn't have the right to be. Um, <laughs> and, and this is all oh, what, I mean, I just read it sort of in the, um, was it the critics or something saying how it's surprisingly, you know, on point when it comes to relatability and like insight and stuff. Fleshing out the character and stuff. Yeah. So that's, you yeah. know, yeah, very true. Yeah, I think that was I think that was also a praise uh, as opposed yeah, to just like, a good. question. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got the darkness dev who says this Harley Quinn cartoon feels like the adult version of Teen Titans Go, <laughs> crying laugh face. <laughs> um, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. It's hard to tell whether that's praise or not. I don't. I think they might have been, you know, um, that might be some sort of yeah i mean they just might have meant offense by that because teen titans go doesn't necessarily have a great it might yeah because it doesn't great. it has a like a, a split crowd i would say teen titans go um, yeah if you've listened to our previous episodes uh we 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 were lucky enough to go and see a sort of you know um a showing of it of the teen titans go movie we loved it yeah yeah we're on the a minority maybe of yeah. people that really enjoy the show <laughs> uh but many don't yeah so that could go that could go either way yeah Hopefully that's it's a positive yeah yeah i, I took so. it as a positive because of yeah what, i would as well if anything was, oh yeah High anything praise. that's related to teen titans go i'm like oh yeah that's a positive <laughs> 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 and then uh, finally we've got lily as a monster who says i absolutely hate the harley quinn cartoon i despise it Oof. That's clearly and, uh, why that... she's a monster. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> the street. Taking it to the street. <laughs> no, I, I just um fair enough, yeah. So that's a um you know, not everyone's cup of tea then, clearly. So not everyone's no. That's a, some people that's a general... that some people despise it apparently. Yeah. So it's got it's got the love hate going on. Mm. Yeah, there was no in the middle, was there? No, no, not really. Though we're still kind of unsure about what the Teen Titans go. Really yeah, I mean, that um, could be either way. Yeah, but, but still, <laughs> I think like that's an extreme though. Either yeah, either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that could have been. Yeah, so it seems like extremes on the on the Harley Quinn, yeah. and I suppose it uh, it depends what you want from it, what you expect it. Yeah. Had had you have you watched this before? No, no, I hadn't seen any. Uh, like I heard that it was out and it was doing doing well, mainly from you, I believe. <laughs> yeah, I've seen and, it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah, so it's uh, it was fresh to you, um, <clears throat> old news to me. Oh, this guy already on it. Already on it. So so uh, all right then. Well, with with that out of the way, let's let's dig in. Um, obviously, it kind of begins. It, this is uh, like the first episode and especially the first sort of three minutes mm. three to five minutes however long that might be it, it's pretty short but it gives you everything you need and are going to explain so it's just it's got more swearing in like than the rest of the episode combined yeah um probably equally as much blood mm. and then sort of a you know you, the actual relationship set up between yeah. harley and and joker mm. which is kind of 
what especially I think the first season is all about. Right. So that's basically everything in a nutshell. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we got we got more insight into their relationship in that five minutes than we did in the whole Suicide Squad film. So yeah, that's so- interesting. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, a real joker. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, what? so did that did that sort of set you off on the right foot, do you think? Or I mean, think it was yeah. Too much? Um, I mean, it, it did feel a bit over the top, to be honest, for, for me. Like, like I, I, I mean, my, it's just personal preference, but I mean, like, yeah, yeah. I... I, I I don't necessarily find swearing particularly funny or, or whatever. Um, I also find it weird that like adult cartoons lean into it as being like, this is what makes it adult is we say naughty words. Yeah. Like I find that really strange, but I mean, like it had the violence as well. So it was like, okay, fair enough. Like this is, yeah, yeah. you know, they're trying to like get you to understand what's going on. Um, and it did, like you say, it did ease off as it, as it, as it continued, but. It was a good way of showing you, like, this isn't, you know, your uncle's yeah, Batman you, series. <laughs> you know what you're getting straight off the bat. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, yeah, it's kind of good and bad because I, that's what, like, having watched it, you know, more of it, mm. you kind of go to that start bit and you think, you, you just notice everything. You're like, oh, yeah, that's right. a bit, all right, chill out. Mm. You know, actually say words and not just a string of swear words. Yeah, I I know it sounds like some weird crotchety old man saying you're swearing is bad, but yeah. it just seems like almost just like it's it's just overboard, isn't it? Yeah, it's excessive, isn't like it? They're trying to do it on purpose, and I think you notice that in yeah. the first. But I, I think, like like we say, there's clear intent for the reason they've done that. Mm. Um, but on the plus side, you know that bit also does show you sort of the humour as well yeah and what you're getting out of it It is quite funny um and i think the joker is quite good in this and it and it is a good i think it what they've done with harley quinn so i I, like obviously the original harley quinn you go back to the animated series harley quinn was very much as she is here sort of in Mm. an abusive relationship yeah um which worked really well and obviously a lot of people associated with that maybe or you know felt for Harley and that's kind of how she started becoming but if you want to carry that character on and have her own adventure she can't just be that Mm. in the same as in the same way as life like if you're in an abusive relationship that becomes your life I suppose yeah you have to break out to have your own life and to have your own stories and that's exactly what they do with Harley mm. in in this episode really isn't it yeah you, you do you see it sort of all form don't you throughout yeah. by the time you get to the end of the episode it's a good it's like it's almost like a prequel to the series of like and now she can do what she wants yeah <laughs> now she will have her own adventures but yeah it's 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 a good way of getting across um you know well, understanding the dynamics of the character in a way that like is, I, I feel like it hasn't really explicitly been said especially on film um, yeah. or like in a in such a concise way I don't think before like you know like maybe over a few issues of comics and stuff but like yeah. I feel like this did it real fast and it, yeah. it uh, not to its detriment either like it, it did it pretty well like you you understood you know there's some complexity there as well as being like oh okay so like now she's moving on and like it didn't feel rushed at the same yeah. time as it was like oh okay I, I, I get it now well, they, and, and they pull on things that are really, like, obviously important to, about the character. So, like, Holly used to be, you know, a criminal psychiatrist. Yeah. And it's, like, that kind of... Or it makes her sort of fall to the Joker almost sadder, I think. Yeah. Uh, but they pull on it well and, and, like, use it almost... Like, she has, like... Obviously, she's gone a bit loopy because she's fallen to the acid and it's made a bit more like the Joker. Yeah. But she then has conversations with her previous self almost mm. in in ways that could be, you know, it could easily not go well. Yeah. But because of the way they've done it, they've made it funny, they've made it light, but they've given you everything you need to know. Like they're giving you just enough seriousness whilst making it fun as well. 
yeah yeah the tone doesn't change necessarily like no. even though they they tackle in some deeper stuff and I, I thought that as well was was quite something that I, I feel like I hadn't really seen before like just the you know you kind of forget that she was um you know she was a, a doctor there she was a psychiatrist and like you never sort of really think about like oh she might have actually helped some people along the way like because usually like it's just it's, you just get a snapshot of her and it's always with the joker isn't it like yeah, yeah. it's it's almost as if she didn't do that outside of being just you know with with the joker and becoming like you know completely sort of brainwashed by him yeah. um so it's it's kind of it's kind of fun to get a glimpse of like oh yeah actually maybe she was actually helpful to some people that's that's quite weird yeah. <laughs> like imagine if you're if you're a doctor then became some sort of super villain that'd be <laughs> yeah. a weird twist that you'd be like, yeah, I, thought, I knew that guy he was a, he was all right it's a big part of who she is and you kind of never really pay it much attention yeah and it's good because it does make you think about like that the, the way that they've they've introduced it and almost told you about that history it gives you because it was always there it was always in front of you that she was um a doctor it, it was always part of it it's nothing new mm. but by doing yeah. that it, it brings it to your attention makes it clear and then you can appreciate it yeah yeah i think i think they did that really well yeah i i, I and i think there's a lot of that the, the show does have a lot of heart in in a in a funny way mm. um the other thing i think that they do really well is by it, it's so ludicrous like the characters are also ludicrous mm. that it kind of helps to separate it from what you already know yeah and this is something with you know with comics and with movies and stuff everyone has their own version mm. and it makes it hard almost to appreciate other versions yeah because they're so close as well like, yeah and you're like well I, I don't see that happening like there's a bit in this yeah. like, i think batman is still sort of treated in a similar way if, mm. if not silly he still feels like a batman but then yeah. there's a bit where he sort of chases the Joker off when he could have saved Harley. Yeah. And I immediately thought, like, mm, I don't think Batman would do that. I think he would save yeah. Harley first. But and I think that's only because they've made him still, he still is Batman in it. Mm. Whereas everyone else is so ridiculous. If they do something that you might not, like, like the Riddler say. Yeah. He is, he is a ridiculous character. He yes, yeah. that you would be like the riddler wouldn't do that you wouldn't be bothered no because it's like the version they've made yeah it's this riddler it's just yeah. he does this like that makes perfect sense for him because he's a nutcase like yeah and then as it goes like um as it goes on i mean i don't want to talk too much outside of episode one um mm. just because not watch it but as an example uh bane becomes a real sort of comic relief character all oh, right the, the butt of all the jokes and he, he talks like sort of the the movie bane all oh, right that's quite cool and but it's it is hilarious sort of thing but that's kind of always helping you to separate to what it is it is it's pure yeah. satire isn't it and yeah yeah and I, I like the way they've done that because it could easily be like yeah no don't really like it and and it's weird because they've done it in a way that to many characters it's absolutely nothing like what you know but mm. as far as harley quinn goes they've 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 dealt with her in a very i think true to character and sort of not not realistic but that is just true just a true way like the way that you would you could easily if you were a fan of harley i think you could watch this and be like yep yeah, that's harley right um in in a, in a good way yeah because i mean so so many people get you know I, I, you can imagine that there's the people that are really upset by this series just existing because yeah <laughs> for some reason like there's just the comic book fandom there's there's elements of it where people get very much invested in in these characters and stuff and they can't handle like a new version or anything different from what they grew up with or whatever so yeah. you know there's there's gonna be that crowd that that do detest this or despise it you know as some people have said yeah, yeah. um but i mean it's it, i think by now we, I, I, you know we should be adjusted to the fact that there are different versions 
because yeah, yeah. you know we've we've had the books for for a long time and even they change all the time when they go from writer to artist to whoever you know it's not the same book um and then you know we've had the the cartoon series before we've got all the different films now I mean, and like how many of them have been remade like 20 times yeah, at this point yeah. so it's like you should realize that it's like you know yeah it's the same name but it's not the same thing every time do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and i think there's there's something to be said as well you to to to, to go and really complain about it now, harley yeah. quinn's character i mean she's got her own movie now yeah she's been in two movies she's going to be in another one in like the next it's like is it this month um uh, sure the the new suicide squad film comes out soon very soon um, yeah obviously you've got this she's in games she's not a character yeah. that hasn't been you know out there so yeah. if you don't like this then you you can go it's not like you know when they bring a character to screen for the first time and then you don't yeah. like that i can kind of understand that because it's almost like the only shot that that character is going to get yeah yeah well this you know there's going to be more harley quinn exactly so yeah if you don't like it then you know stick to your other stuff i guess exactly yeah you've got options <laughs> yeah you know if you were if you were a massive i don't know you know condiment king fan mm. who i mean to be fair condiment king's in this <laughs> <laughs> But you know, so like, it's a really, really obscure character that they're just never ever going to bring, and then they decide I'm going to bring it to the screen. Mm. Like, imagine if you were a massive Bane fan and you went and watched yeah. Batman and Robin. Oh man, yeah. It could always be worse. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the, <laughs> that, that that could that could have been a tragedy, actually. Yeah, I never really thought that. Let's, yeah. let's all take a moment to think about the Bane fans that then sat and watched. <laughs> yeah, because there, there's got to have been some. <laughs> yeah, absolutely tears. good. Yeah, I think that the, I guess yeah, it depends how much people decide to like make this a part of their identity and stuff as well. Yeah. Like, you know, we we once we met a guy who had like some comic uh, characters tattooed on himself, and you know there was a theme of like heroes and villains and stuff and then as stories changed he found out that like one of the the villains he got tattooed on his villain side had become like a hero almost and he was yeah. he was definitely he was more than a bit upset about it so it was, it was venom wasn't it <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah, <laughs> he, he, he just came in and was like oh this is when we had i mean i think we've said before but we used to run a comic book shop and he said um he, he literally asked us, didn't he? Like, is yeah. Venom a hero now? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it doesn't it doesn't change things. I guess then the movie came out and uh, yeah, he was a hero in that as well, wasn't he? So yeah, I mean, if you're gonna get it tattooed on you, then I mean, I guess that's your call anyway. Like, yeah. you've got to be prepared for consequences. Down and the line. you know what, like. If that guy's listening, Venom's still a villain, I think. People still know that he's a villain. Mm. Like, even if he isn't a villain, yeah. he was at some point. Yeah, that's it. Like, there's always that version, like, yeah. that, that doesn't go away, no matter how many times someone remakes it. It's like, there's always going to be, it doesn't erase the old one. No. I mean, not, not yet. I mean, we don't know what can happen in the future with the digital content and stuff like that. Maybe that's where we're going, guys. You know, maybe it's like the next film comes out and all the other ones are suddenly unavailable or your DVDs disintegrate into nothing and they're everything, wiped from our memory. Everything gets the George Lucas edit. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's all Every gone. Thing. Yeah. And but we're not there yet. So we can be happy in the fact that we're <laughs> the old versions still stand as of now. <laughs> as of 2021 <laughs> okay well we've talked about it we've chatted quinn mm -hmm. let's get over to our reviews you've seen 1997's biggest film batman on robin and you loved its great lineup of characters well your favorite is back coming this summer of 1999 a spin-off that you'd never imagine would have made it it's Quantum Bane, 
During a government experiment into time travel, Bane finds himself trapped in the past, leaping into bodies of different people on a regular basis and sorting out their problems whilst trying to get back to Gotham City in his own time. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Johnson. I, I really, I really don't think little Johnny will be, be able to speak. <laughs> no, I believe in him. J Johnny, please, please just, just say one word. Just say something. <coughs> what, what was that, Johnny? Did you say, Mama? He did it! He did it, Doctor! Oh, I'm so proud of my little Johnny! You're, you're such a chatterbox, aren't you, Johnny? <laughs> Dude, it's, it's time to do it! We've been waiting for this comeback for years. It's time. As far as we're concerned, man, we're the biggest band in the whole of the world. And you, you're our voice. Time to get out there, dude. The crowd are waiting to hear this final track. Here we go, dude. Get out there. Get out there and tell them, bro. <clears throat> Dude, the crowd is going wild, man. Where did you come up with that stuff, bro? <laughs> Sir, the people are waiting. This is, I don't want to put any pressure on you, sir, but this is the most pivotal moment in the whole of the United States. And uh, the people in the world are, are waiting to hear what you've got to say. We've we've got trouble in every continent almost, but the American people will stand by your side. We just need to hear it from you, sir. We need to hear what you've got to say. Please. The cameras are waiting. <laughs> sir, I... I've never heard something so beautiful. I never thought I'd be this proud to be an American. Quantum Bane, coming summer 1999. Okay, so here at Toon Jam, we have a three-point rating system that goes as follows. Thumbs up, 100% of Rotten Tomatoes, baby. Oh, yeah. We get in there. Uh, thumbs down, um, 1997 as a year for superhero movies. And shaky middle, um, rating, breaking down reviews into series episodes so on and so forth simply to get 100 percent. what's going on there that seems a bit shaky middle to me so good bad you know hmm. Hmm. so harley quinn episode one <laughs> I, I like that i say that as, as soon as we review a singular episode yeah <laughs> <laughs> harley quinn, episode one scene one go <laughs> See, well, literally first thing we did was review the first three minutes as well so yeah um oh boy oh what have we become okay so harley quinn episode one your thoughts <laughs> well the first scene let me tell you um <laughs> uh, it did uh, it it did set me up thinking like ah, oh, this may not be what i thought it was going to be um but you know like we said i think there was a purpose behind the, the overkill there um i mean uh you know it is it, it, sometimes it does feel like it's sweary for the sake of it but i mean i guess it helps give it that adult rating or whatever that means um but it's it's got like you know 
it, it doesn't feel like a kid's show. The rest of it doesn't either, mm. you know, swearing aside. Um, so, you know, I, I think, it, yeah, it definitely makes it stand out from the rest of the, the series that have come before it. Um, I think they, they did a lot with the characters in a short space of time. So, like, you know, in less time than other people have been given and we've seen nothing. So, <laughs> fair play on that point. Um, you know, they, they did... Uh, they, they showed us characters that, that we know and, and love sort of thing in different lights um, and in different ways. And like I said, like perspectives that I feel like have really been glossed over sometimes. You sort of get a little glimpse here where it's like, oh, yeah, I never really thought of that, which is which is nice, especially for, you know, characters that have been around for a couple of decades. Like. Mm. Um, and you know the the action was fun. There was some some good humour in there. I did I did chuckle a few times. Like the Jim Rash as Riddler was really really doing it for me. Like yeah. the, I pretty much every scene of his in I was cracking up. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks like it's it's got it's got some real potential. I mean, like this episode did feel like it was you know one big sort of setup for for the series, but it, it worked well. It was still entertaining throughout. Um, and yeah, that, I, I can't really think of anything other than you know. The, the excess in, in naughty words um, at the start that, that I've really had any any issue with. It was it was pretty enjoyable. So I think for me, it's going to have to be a thumbs up for Harley Quinn. Wow, there you go. Um, yeah, I um, uh, obviously I've I've watched a bit more, so obviously I you know liked it. Uh, it's not going to come as a surprise. But um, as far as going back to this episode, I the, the more you think about it, sort of. I can kind of see why they're a bit copious with with those kind of things, with the swearing and and, mm. and such. Because, you know, Harley Quinn is a character that kids know. Mm. She's in, like, DC superhero girls. Yeah. And stuff like that. Um, and the DC universe as well is also something that obviously kids know, you know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. It, all these things they've got to kind of make you see straight off the bat that what you know what they're doing is not is not for the kids so you you know you need to see that straight away so you can say okay no mm. the kids can't watch this so you kind of it's when you haven't got that problem it's not it's not evident to you but you know when you think about it yeah it makes a lot of sense why maybe they go overboard because i mean there is a lot of swearing in it but i think yeah. as it goes on it becomes more part and parcel of the show mm. um, and it doesn't feel as forced as it did at the very start of this one. Um, but I think they did a very good job with the first episode. Um, the, like, like you say, the humour is on point um, and there's and there's so many funny characters in it, um, just down to like little side characters like the goons and, you know, the, the prison guards um, mm. and things like that. Even like plants are funny. Yeah. In it. Um, so it has got like the humour like especially in a, a time where a lot of what you see um especially in animated comedy at the moment tends to be either it's like either rick and morty or family guy mm. so for them to go out there and and, and and it's not like worlds apart don't get me wrong but it's it's his own thing as well isn't it yeah and it uses the dc universe and fans I think can easily watch it and have a laugh at the stuff they know. It's got a lot of stuff for you and it's got a lot of stuff if you don't know as well, because I mean, odds are everyone knows who the characters are, even if they know nothing about them, they know who like the penguin is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We, they're part of just general pop knowledge. So it's cool to see them doing that. And in a way that is funny and is lighthearted whilst also having a good heart to it and and making you actually feel something while you're watching it, which is it's pretty impressive, I think, um, especially for just one 20 minute episode. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, thumbs up. Well, well, yeah. You thumbs up. Back, back on back on track. Hey, yeah, we recovered quick. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> let's hope it win. keeps up. Um, but yeah, last week was a was a real dive. Mm. and it looks like we're back we're back let's hope for good let's hope that we never do a thumbs down episode ever again oh imagine imagine everything we watch is is fantastic i know so, like, we've watched all the rubbish <laughs> that's it we've oh. seen every bad show there is it's, it's all good from a couple of years in it's all it, we've done it 
Oh man. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, guys. I think it's going to get rough. How long? How long until we get another thumbs down? Yeah. I reckon if it's not next week, it's the week after. <laughs> <laughs> not long apparently it's, it's too good to be true we've you know one down and then done no 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 well there you go um harley quinn we here at toon jam gave it two thumbs up uh what did you think about it you can get in touch with us let us know on the three batman and robins of the internet facebook instagram and twitter at toon jam pod uh, if you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to rate and review us. Uh, it really, really does help. It helps people find us, uh, which is, which is, you know, what it's all about: extending the community. Um, and also, if you like, if you like what you hear, and you like, you've not heard the old episodes, but you want to get them, head over to our YouTube. Uh, we also have a Patreon for bonus episodes, and we have a merchandise store, which is bit.ly forward slash Toon Jam Shop. So head over there for some T-shirts, some tote bags and the like. Check them out. There's all sorts on there. Otherwise, all there's left to say is thank you so much for listening. And until next time, you stay jammy. Hey, everyone. Thank you for listening. If you want to help the show keep going, you can be extra jammy by heading over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash toonjampod. Here you can get a shout out on the show or unlock bonus episodes. Ratings and reviews anywhere you listen to the podcast also really help us out. So thank you and stay jammy.